What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out uh, bad news for Cody Rose, rest in peace, a WCW wrestler, and John Cena announces WWE retirement plan and other wrestling related news by WrestleMania. The talk of the town obviously is The Rock being one of the uh, um, being one of the board members now for TKO and also his uh you know involvement in wrestlemania this year what he was talking about on first take the other day um talking about wrestling roman reigns at um at this year's wrestlemania and that puts a question mark on cody rhodes and what his plans will be at this year's wrestlemania um so i don't know it's, it's gonna be a very interesting uh situation to see how things play out but i don't know I, I just don't see him at this particular moment they're going with the rock i just don't see him p potentially finishing his story but we will see but we're gonna see uh what wrestlemania has uh has to say and what other news stories he he was able to uh, dig up appreciate all love support you guys on what is going on guys it is Get wrestlemania it. here back with some more news join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know including a really bad news for cody rhodes yeah, john cena good. drops retirement bombshell michael cole returning to smackdown a former wcw wrestler passes away William Regal returns to NXT I and much more. Be sure to Twitter. subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new website, WrestleMania.com. Now let's hit the intro and get straight into our first story. Our first story looks at major shakeups for WrestleMania and bad news for Cody Rhodes. At top of today's news is a report from Sports Illustrated that the WWE's plans for two top matches at WrestleMania 40 will be different than originally believed. Mm. Let's look at the rumored Mania lineup and how it impacts the American Nightmare. First, Sports Illustrated's Justin Barrasso reports that The Rock vs. Roman Reigns is almost a lock, especially after The Rock joined oh, TKR damn. Holdings Board of Directors. In addition, the WWE has a different opponent for Seth Rollins than CM Punk. After a month of speculation that CM Punk would challenge World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins at WrestleMania, a new plan is in place. Gunther mm, is the favorite to win the Royal Rumble wow. and then dethrone Rollins on the first night of WrestleMania. Wow. Barrasso said that a World Heavyweight Championship win by Gunther would allow him to defend the title at the WWE's upcoming PLE in Berlin. If The Rock vs. Roman mm. happens at WrestleMania, it appears it will be a one-on-one -on -one match. Consequently, Cody Rhodes will not finish his story at WrestleMania 40. Wow. Barrasso commented, where does this leave Cody Rhodes? Multiple sources close to WWE head of creative Paul Triple H Levesque have indicated that Rhodes will not headline this year's event, nor will he finish his story at WrestleMania. Damn. But there's still a new chapter to write with a marquee matchup to be had against CM Punk. But prior to this report, it was believed that Seth Rollins would defend the World Heavyweight Championship against CM Punk and that Gunther might wrestle Brock Lesnar. Cody's status for the showcase of the Immortals was still uncertain, with some rumors stating that he might be inserted into the Rock vs. Roman match, making it a triple threat. What do you guys think about these major changes? What do you guys think about Cody actually not finishing the story and possibly having another year of no title defenses by Reigns? Next up, wow, John. Bro. If these are true. This crazy. And let's talk about the Seth Rollins Gunther thing. That's very interesting. They could pull one of the biggest swerves in Royal Rumble history and actually have Gunther win it. Would I have a problem with it? No, I wouldn't. Only because Gunther deserves it. I would not have a problem with it. But the question is, what do you do with CM Punk? Elimination Chamber is right around the corner. Unless the unless the Rock gets in the Elimination Chamber match, what do you do there? And if the Rock is going to face Roman Reigns at this year's WrestleMania, like we talked about before, um, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 that's a tough one. That's 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 a tough one for Cody because essentially his story would be done. And if it doesn't happen at this year's WrestleMania, it's not going to be the same to happen at another show. It's essentially over. Which means that most likely Roman Reigns will be the champion for the rest of this year. And it's, for me, the match between Rock and Roman obviously will be a, a, a memorable one. But at the same time, 
we have to deal with The Rock. I mean, Roman holding that championship because The Rock's not going to win it. So we're going to have to le legitimately just deal with Roman holding that championship hostage for a whole nother year, essentially. And if he doesn't lose it at WrestleMania, then they're going to have him beat the Ho uh, Hulk Hogan's record, which wouldn't happen until September of this year. So, yes, we have to sacrifice another year for a great match. I'm sure it'll be a fantastic match between Rock and Roman, but we have to sacrifice a whole another year. That's, I don't know, man. I really don't want that to be the outcome. I want them to have the match. I just don't want them to sacrifice SmackDown in the process. That's my only thing. John Cena drops two retirement bombshells. There's big news coming from John Cena as the WWE GOAT recently revealed when he intends to retire and where he would like his last match to take place. John Cena has been dropping hints for some time that his retirement is on the horizon. During an interview with Entertainment Tonight, Cena went into detail about when he expects to retire and stressed his retirement is happening. That's not a maybe, that time is going to come and it's going to come soon. The 16-time world champion told Turner he wants to end things when he's still able to perform at a high level. I made a promise to the consumer early on, to WWE fans, because I know how tough it is to be a fan. you got to come out of pocket and WWE has done a ton of content and it takes a lot to be a passionate fan and our fan base is passionate and global. I never wanted to go out there just for the sake of going out there. Mm -hmm. John Cena has said in many other interviews and retiring with dignity seems like something he's committing to achieve. While some fans love to see their favorite stars compete, regardless of their in-ring ability, Cena seems to subscribe to the idea that wrestlers should be able to deliver as long as they wrestle. Yeah. As for a retirement date, Cena didn't really name a date and time, but he knows what the expiration date is. I'm going to be 47 this year. I feel great. So inside I feel great, but I know what it takes to be a WWE performer night in, night out. And I don't want to ever go out there and do it to do it. I want to have passion, the same passion as a fan base, and I want to give them exactly what they give me. The mouths on the speedometer say, hey, that's got to be done before 50. Damn. The man who parlayed his Doctor of Thugonomics character into a main event career recently chatted with the BBC's The One Show about his love for the UK fans and where he wants to wrestle his final match. I go by the construct in the life of never trying to pick my opponents because that's way above my pay grade. But I've been an active advocate for London to host WrestleMania. Mm. A lot of people think when I go out in the middle of the ring and I say that it's just for the local moment and we want to make this show happy. Fans in the UK, WWE fans, they're the best. Fans in London specifically will let you know how they feel. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'll be able to choose my opponent, but if I could choose a venue, it'd be the O2 in London. Wow. What do you guys think of Cena's retirement plans? Is 50 a good age to retire? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up. And here's, a, here's the crazy thing. If they're able to pull that off, uh, I'm, I'm all for it. I don't know who would be his opponent. That would make sense. You know, preferably someone, you know, it could be just like maybe a newer, newer guy. I don't know. That would be very interesting. And I honestly would, I would want John to go out on a win, depending on who it is. And the talent that they he goes against. Honestly, actually, I just thought about it. CM Punk. CM Punk. I would go with CM Punk. I would I actually that I, I just got goosebumps about thinking about that. CM Punk. That makes sense. They have changed. Things have changed with John Cena and CM Punk over these past 10 years. I'm I'd CM Punk. If that's his last match, CM Punk. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that. I don't even have to say anything. The history speaks for itself. CM Punk. Is Raw getting rid of commercials? Well, that could be the case based off a new rub coming after the announcement that Netflix acquired the rights to air Raw. Does this mean that Netflix subscribers with a commercial free option get to watch uninterrupted matches? Or will the WWE come up with a contrived situation so matches don't air during commercials? CNBC media reporter Alex Sherman recently tweeted about the situation. A new detail from the Netflix Raw deal, for Netflix subs that don't get ads, the vast majority of y'all, Raw matches will be scripted around commercial breaks, so you will get some non-important match action, sustained headlocks instead of commercials. Oh. You won't get ads. If this story pans out, should fans who pay the premium for commercial-free content have a cause for celebration? 
Does this mean that fans will get to see more in-ring action? It's an enticing possibility, but there could be an unpleasant alternative. Yeah. Fans may not see a so pleasant blast from the past as WWE structures its shows for matches and before commercials. Mm -hmm. Fans will recall that the WWE's bizarre policy from a few years back, pre-pandemic, where it did not air matches during commercials. This led to matches being stopped and restarted so that fans watching at home didn't miss out on the matches. Mm -hmm. If Netflix airs Raw and carries matches into their entirety for commercial free subscribers, the streaming service has a powerful incentive to convince lower tier subscribers to choose the commercial free option. Netflix has until 2025 to work with the WWE to figure things out. If ever a company has proven the adage, necessity is the mother of invention, it's the WWE. Don't be surprised to see them handle a commercial free and commercial full show with its usual versatility. Next up, Michael Cole. That's going to be very interesting too, because for those who don't know, a lot of times during the commercial breaks, that those, they, unless they're doing picture in picture, a lot of times they're just doing rest holds. Like it's nothing's really happening within the actual match itself, unless they're doing picture in picture. So it's going to be very interesting to see, um, uh, Monday Night Raw with essentially no commercials. So what are they going to be doing during the, you know, some people having commercials, some people don't. Are they going to be doing rest holds, rest locks? Like what's going to happen there? It's going to be very interesting to see how they break that up and make that work for uh, a three hour show. If they're going to continue to be a three hour show on Netflix as well. Pretending to SmackDown. Uh, who will be SmackDown's lead announcer now that Kevin Patrick is out? Well, according to PW Insider, Michael Cole is headed to the blue brand to cover the commentary duties until the WWE finds a replacement. Oh, so There's currently back. no word on who the replacement will be or whether the WWE intends to keep Patrick around for other work. Next up, William Regal returns to... Here's the thing. Uh, again, I'm not a person that's happy about someone getting fired, but I'm going to be honest with you. Kevin Patrick, in just the job that he was given, I know they tried. Um... Nah, it didn't work. Kevin Patrick was not the guy. The voice for uh, wrestling, he just, he, it, it didn't work. It didn't work. And it's not even because of his accent. It was just more so how he was delivering the lines too. And it just, it didn't work. You like him on commentary, just, you didn't feel much of nothing. So I understand why he was let go. You know, once again, I'm not here advocating someone getting fired, but it just it it didn't work. Maybe he can go back to being on the pre-show. I think that would probably work better for him or whatnot. I don't I don't even know about the backstage interviewing either, but maybe do pre-show stuff if they choose to keep him. I think he fits that role more. Uh, well, he fits that role better, but on commentary, he no, it's it's not good. No, it's it's not so. NXT. Now, the rumors are true. William Regal is back Didn't on NXT, this but how long will he be sticking around for? Fans tuning into this week's NXT saw Ava Rain appointed as the Black and Gold Brand's general manager, not to mention she being the youngest general manager ever in history yeah. at 22 years of age. They also saw former NXT general manager William Regal wish Reigns luck and offer her any advice she wants about the job. Regal returned to WWE in 2023 after negotiating an early release with his deal from AEW. However, rumor has it his early release came with the condition that he could not appear on WWE television for a year. There was significant speculation that Regal returned due to Triple H's elevation to running the WWE's creative department. A Fightful Select recently reported that WWE had been discussing bringing Regal back. With Ava Rain serving as NXT general manager, could the ever crafty Regal work his way back in the position of power? There are other possibilities, including Regal managing talent. Whatever the case, the former King of the Ring brings much to the table, whether it's his ability to talk, call matches, or guide talent behind the scenes. What do you guys think of Ava Rain officially becoming the NXT general manager? Let us know in the comments down below. That's crazy. So The Rock is, becomes one of the, the board members at TKO, and then it trickles down to his daughter being the youngest general manager in WWE history. <laughs> the Rock is truly the head of the table. We we we've confirmed that now. Um I feel that's a good role, you know, for her right now and you know, depending on what they have her doing and and maybe, you know, just the the stuff that they will have her say, it may transform into something else more of a wrestling role, but we'll see how that plays out. But I think 
that's probably the best fit for her right now. And we'll see what they have her do and, and how, you know, things will go from there. And it may translate to maybe her getting, you know, getting back in the ring or, you know, being a, a, a bigger prominent figure in NXT even more. So we'll see how that plays out. But uh, yeah, man, that that's very, very interesting. The timing on that. Very interesting. Next up, a former WCW wrestler passes away. Now we're certain to report the death of former WCW star Ice Train, aka Harold Hogue. Former WWE superstar Mark Merrow, who also worked in WCW during Ice Train's run, tweeted the news saying, I just heard the devastating news that our longtime friend and wrestling superstar Harold Hogue, aka Ice Train, passed away. Oh, I damn. couldn't believe my eyes when I read this and immediately called DDP and he confirmed what we were seeing was in fact real. This really hits home and he was truly one of the good guys, only 56 years young. Damn. My heart goes out to his wife and kids and his numerous fans. Heartbroken, rest in peace our amazing friend. Damn. Ice Train is best remembered for two campaigns in WCW, including his Fire and Ice tag team with Scott Norton. We send our condolences to Mr. Hogue's friends, fans, and family. Uh, definitely sending our condolences to his uh, family and friends, man. Once again, we say it all the time, and I'm going to keep saying it. Enjoy your life while you can. Live every day like it's your last. And don't get hung up on the, the little things. Enjoy it. Because when your time is up, your time is up. And that's it. So enjoy your life. That's all you can do every single day. Make the best of it. Finally, The Rock's big score. And last but not least, The Rock is getting a huge payday for joining TKO Holdings Board oh Directors. Boy. As we reported yesterday, Dwayne Johnson gets the rights to use his Rock intellectual property as partial compensation for joining the board. But that's not all as CNN Business is reporting. The company said in a regulatory filing Tuesday that it will pay Johnson $30 million in stock awards to promote Damn. the brand as part of his new deal. The awards will vest over the course of 2024 and 2025. With the rumors that The Rock will face Roman Reigns in a match at Mania, it looks like The Rock's wrestling roots are paying off more than ever. Yeah. What do you guys think about The Rock joining TKO? Let us know in the comments down. Yeah, man. It, I'm, I'm happy for him being able to own his name. You know, The Rock, you know, being able to get that is very important. Ownership, very important, y'all. So I'm happy for him. I, I hope, once again, the situation may be they do a slow build. I think it would be perfect to do a slow build of them, uh, Roman and The Rock. That's that's my personal opinion. I don't think a title needs to be had for them to have this match because we clearly know who's really the head of the table right now, and it's The Rock, legitimately. So I personally don't think it needs to happen right now. I think this needs to be some type of build. And I think the perfect build is having a dethroned Roman Reigns because at this point, he's going to be even more dangerous. You know, have Cody win or whatever the case may be and have Roman go away for a while. And he comes back and maybe he's trying to wreck shop or whatever. You can even build the story of him disrespecting his family even more because he doesn't have the championship and he blames them. You know, and that you can incorporate the rock being involved there he's like nah we're not about to do this you can do something like that build towards next year's wrestlemania we know that would be the main event you can do something in that nature if you wanted to but if they want to get this going now then there ain't nothing cody can do at that point so comment down below let me know man how do you feel about the potential rumors of Cody's story pretty much being closed and them moving on from that and the fact that we may not even get CM Punk versus Seth Rollins we may get uh Seth Rollins versus Gunther for the World Heavyweight Championship let me know how y'all feel about that let me know how y'all feel about John Cena's retirement uh his retirement plans and who do y'all think he should face as his last match me I personally think uh CM Punk will be a fantastic last match for John Cena, y'all let me know how y'all feel about that, man. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel. Road to 150k. And I'm still young, speedy YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.